Good afternoon. Today, as the chair of Munchabar Creek State Schools New Health and Wellbeing Committee, I'd like to bring to your attention a health issue that affects not only the community and society around us, but also the students we teach and work for. The health issue that I would like our school to focus on is health literacy. More specifically, health literacy related to nutritional information so that they can make informed decisions in what they choose to eat. It is no secret that obesity is a growing population problem in Australia. As seen in this graph, the number of overweight and obese children have risen in as little as 12 years. According to data collected in 2011, one quarter of children, that is approximately 600,000 children in Australia, are overweight or obese. These statistics only get worse as Australians become adults. Data from 2007-2008 show that 61% of Australian adults are overweight or obese. This data shows a terrible truth for our nation and something has to be done as early as possible to try to prevent this health problem from becoming worse. We as a school have an important responsibility to teach our stu students how to be functional people in our community for the present and for the future of Australia. We can't force students and their families to eat healthy food but we can teach them to understand their body and what the food that they are eating has in it so that they can make informed choices in what they put into their body. At the moment, young Australians are consuming enough or excessive amounts of carbohydrates, protein and fat, but consumption of fruit and vegetables is far below the needed amount. In fact, data from 2011 to 2012 shows only 6.8% of the Australian population consume enough amount of vegetables and 54 consume a significant amount of fruit. This report also shows that one third of energy consumed was from discretionary foods, which are foods that are considered to have little nutritional value but contain a high amount of saturated fats, salts and sugar. This shows that too many of us are eating too little amount of fruits and veg and replacing them with unhealthy alternatives. It really is true that we are what we eat, but what if we don't even know what we are eating? Even if an individual makes a choice to be healthy, statistics shows that only a small amount of the population are health literate enough to be able to actively achieve that. This graph shows the percentage of males and females in each state which are level 3 or higher in health literacy. Level 3 is the minimum understanding required for an adult to make informed choices in their health. This means that only 40% of men and women in Australia are health literate enough to make informed choices on their own health. This is a scary situation when looking at modern society and the amount of advertisement and quick fix that we see constantly every day. People need to be able to understand the information and facts so that they can think for themselves. Otherwise, health is just going to be a losing battle. As a school, we need to take action so that students we teach will not be so easily taken by the media now and as they grow into become adults. Doing something will not only prevent our students from becoming unhealthy adults, but will also improve their attitude and attention levels in school now as they learn to eat the right foods to fuel their body. All we need to do is give the students and the community the knowledge and skills to be able to be health literate so that they can be informed about the choices of foods that they eat. To be able to do this, we as a school need to adopt the health promoting schools approach. This approach evolves using the whole school to make a change in health so that it can affect every part of a student's life. This framework is based on the idea that the school is made up of three components. Curriculum, teaching and learning, school organisations ethos and environment, and partnerships and services. These three are interconnected and all must be involved if we hope to make a change. In the creation of this plan, all three components are used to improve the school's nutrition literacy. Currently, we haven't done much to help this health issue, but with this new plan that the Health and Wellbeing Committee have put together, and with the support of staff and the community, we can be a leading example for Mandrubar. I'd first like to address 
the curriculum teaching and learning component as this will most directly affect us teachers. Our goal is to enable the students to be able to make informed health choices now and in the future. They therefore need knowledge and skills in nutrition literacy to do this. I know the curriculum is already overcrowded, but if we can instead integrate it into subjects and lessons already being taught, instead of having to add nutrition lessons, it won't be so much of a burden on our classroom timetable. This content can easily be added into all subjects, such as maths, science, English, physical education, technologies, and the social sciences. We just have to get creative. An example of adding nutrition literacy into a math lesson on percentages would be to look at a label such as this and discuss not only what the percentage means mass wise but also nutritionally. Another example is history. Say you're exploring an ancient civilization or culture and discussing the food that they eat. Then have a discussion on the food groups and what are missing in their diet and, and talk about the effects that this would have. Younger years could look at the colours of the food in group, um, of the food groups in art and sort out food into the food groups. You just have to think outside the box. The Year 6 coordinator and I have already been working on an assessment item for the Year 6s that involves them planning meals for a week that will cover all the nutritional requirements that an individual needs. This assignment will be covering math, English and science components. Of course, each grade and class will look different in how they integrate nutrition literacy into their lesson, but I believe every teacher in our school will be able to do this. Our goal as the Health and Wellbeing Committee is to have nutrition literacy be taught at least on a weekly basis in each classroom through integration into other subjects. This, we're hoping to get this um, goal completed within two years. This cannot be done without each and every one of you. The committee is also working hard to help you out with this task by creating resources and ideas which is under the health research file in the school intranet. If you have any concerns, questions or feedback, I am contactable via email or phone. I will be sending all of you more information soon. The committee have decided to integrate instead of having specific times for nutrition literacy because it is more efficient that way due to time and funding restraints. Anyway, nutrition literacy provides an interesting and real life contents for other subjects and it has shown to be effective. Also, research shows that regu regular commit, um, curriculum time has a greater impact on students' health and choices than if only short interventions are done. The next stage addresses the school environment component. We will be doing this by improving the tuck shop food and information availability as well as having crunch and sip time. This is the current tuck shop menu. As you can see, it doesn't give parents or children any information about the food that they are purchasing. It also has some variety in food, but it has a lot of what the food group plate calls sometimes food. The first thing we should do is review the items on the list and take out some unnecessary items. This will be done through a survey that you, the parents and senior students all can fill out. The next step is adding more information. I'd like to do this by adding next to each food item on the menu a little symbol that shows which food group it is a part of. This symbol will also be made into stickers that can be put on each item. This way it is easy for students to see what food groups they are choosing and with the nutrition literacy being taught in class they can actively know if they are eating the right amount of each food group. This will also be helped by posters of the food group plate which will be put around the school and in each classroom. A nutrition table will be made up as well and sent to parents via email and put on the school website to help parents and students make choices. We can't make the students choose the right foods, but we can help give them information about it and reduce the amount of sometimes foods they, they can choose from. 
This will take some time to prepare, but I believe by the start of next year, we'll be able to have this finished. To also improve the environment of the school, we will have crunch and sip times in set breaks in the school day. During this time, they can only eat salad or fruit and drink water in the classroom. It can be at any time and done while students are working. The whole idea is to help refill to boost the classroom performance. Why change? The tuck shop menu should be reviewed and changed to enforce what is being taught in the class and to make it as easy as possible for children to choose the right foods. The stickers will provide very um, easy visual information for the students to understand so they can see what foods they are and aren't eating. Our school in Brisbane got positive results when they changed the tuck shop menu along with integrating nutrition literacy into their class lessons. In a case study, three different schools implemented the crunch and sip time with great success, saying it also improves student co um, concentration. The last area I would like to discuss is the partnerships and services. The Healthy Harold organisation has already been contacted and they are more than happy to give a nutrition literacy based lesson to each class with parents being able to attend. This will be a great opportunity to educate not only the children, but parents as well, as they will be our biggest assets in this venture. Not all parents will be able to attend during the day, so in our weekly newsletter, there will be a section included about nutrition. This will include facts and information about nutrition literacy. It will also include useful things like snack ideas and recipes. If we can try to also get parents knowledgeable in nutritional literacy, then we can have a greater impact sooner. We need to include parents in our school plan as they are the greatest influence to the choices the students make. According to research, sending parents information is an important key to the success of health promotion. Schools have found success in having regular newsletter items, including a primary school in Victoria and the same school in Brisbane that integrated nutrition into their curriculum and changed their menu. In summary, obesity is a problem in Australia, with not enough Australians eating um, significant amount of fruit and vegetables. This means Australians need to learn to be more health literate and us as a school are going to teach our students to be nutrition literate, literate by adopting the health promotion schools approach. Our plan is to integrate nutrition literacy into regular lessons to also provide a better environment by changing the tuck shop menu and providing information on those foods as well as having crunch and sip time. We will also include parents by inviting them to come to the Healthy Harold lesson and by having regular newsletter items on nutrition. Thank you for your time and support.